Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, Talk Our Way Out podcast. Got your boy uh, Kyle Orto, Matthew Minoski, and Dustin Plutt here. Um, we're having a good time. We're talking about Gabby Petito today, Kyle's wedding, and some penis. Not in that order. Um, feel <laughs> free to stick around and uh, find out what that meant. Anyways, take it away. Got in. <laughs> wipe down. Yeah, I uh, I can't do labor jobs anymore. I can't. My uh, CV joint on my truck is fucked. Like it's like clicking when I turn. Like my wheels oh, like gonna fall off. Nice. And I have all of the tools to fix it, and I know how to fix it. And I fucking, I just can't bring myself. <laughs> no, to do I'm it. out. I can't I, do yeah, it. I can't do it, man. I, I'm just waiting for my wheel to fall off, and then I'm just gonna buy like, another one or something. Oh dang! I have to buy a new vehicle. <laughs> this one just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping it uh, eventually I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. But I'm yeah, fucking, I don't want to, man. Yeah, it's like doing the gutters. It's like, yeah, I can do it. it probably won't be that hard, but like, I don't really want to climb on the roof right now. It sucks, man. It sucks. And then, like, I've got a tall roof, so like the, the front yard's not so bad because it's like whatever, eight feet off the ground. But the back, if I were to fall off the back of my roof, is no bueno. It's 40 feet. There's no, there's no coming nice. back. So I don't do the back gutters. I get somebody to do that. Nice, I of course. Can, uh, it's not safe enough. Huh. All right, a hey, uh, Dustin. I just gotta finish this email. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Likely That's a great story. intro. <laughs> <laughs> Are we recording. <laughs> <laughs> we've been recording the whole time <laughs> i took a guess that we were recording when I he said hey i was gonna email in a minute just finish your email no, no, whatever okay, man. we just don't whatever. even need you <laughs> yeah, like you're just I'm for just show I'm you're for here. the hair yo what like, the fuck is up guys <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> oh now we start yeah. now, now we we're start. rolling baby let's go kyle these are on the house by the way a oh, little uh okay a little dose of sucralose man. Well, hey, that sounds cool. Hey. Doing sober October next month, but I'm starting to feel like I'm not even—I don't even have an alcohol problem anymore. It's this fucking sugar. <laughs> like I eat and drink sugar way too yeah. much mm. now. It's it's obnoxious. Yeah, and this guy's on the water for the first time in his life. <laughs> I'm the healthy one. <laughs> this is uh, this is my first. Stop crunching the fucking mic, Kyle. You're the oh, one yeah. that. Oh, this is a terrible this. choice. <laughs> It really was. Yeah. It kind of set you all up for failure. Yeah, I don't like that. Don't but no, this is do. my first caffeine in like four or five days. I really? have a pretty big caffeine addiction. What now, time I've never this? had pumpkin spice before. Yeah, that's what I'm leading up to. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, you're having pump? Yeah, oh. I, got, I got pumpkin spice the latte. The pump. Yeah. I just, that I sounded just, bad. No, it all sounds gay. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pumpkin spice latte. All gay. It's all uh, gay. Yeah, I don't know. I've been trying really hard to, uh, to hold off so that I could just casually drink it on this show. And uh, it's going to be very anticlimactic. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. It's, Three, two, one. It's going to be nothing. <laughs> Surprise, there's ketchup in it. Could you imagine? Fucking mustard. <laughs> Why are there condiments on everything? I don't Verdict. even taste the pumpkin. You don't? It's like, it's, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking it was going to taste way more. Oh, uh, waste of time. Seasoned. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on. I moving feel on. like pumpkin spice one of the. Like the overhyped things in the world, like it doesn't sure. taste great. Yeah, even at like at the best one you get is well, gonna be good enough, but not like your best. Pumpkin spice is like, like it's just cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon and nutmeg. You want to know why people like it so much? Why? Let me break it down for you. Okay, this is some science that I heard one time mm -hmm. that I kind of remember, kind of don't. Honestly, I'm also making up a lot. So okay, let's go. hear the science. Scientologist here. Um, obviously the market is uh, your friendly neighborhood white girl, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much any female. I mean, race doesn't matter with pumpkin. Preferably with blonde hair, scarf, <laughs> couple yeah. mittens. This explanation has nothing to do with race. I don't know why I had to go with white girl, but whatever. It Anyways, is what it is. Pumpkin see no race. Um, I read somewhere one time that pumpkin was an aphrodisiac. And mm -hmm. actually, I imagine most girls love pumpkin things because it makes them feel good. And it puts them in that mood. I hmm. think all aphrodisiacs are just full of shit. <laughs> you don't think it's a real thing at all? I don't believe in them. No. Right. no, no. I mean, sprinkle I don't know some anything. fucking rhino horn on my dick or something yeah. like that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know anything about them. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't think I could name more than maybe one or two. Aren't yeah. they like strawberries and chocolate and, or is that just like me? Yeah, leave it. <laughs> is that just <laughs> them? Oh, I'm sorry, just me. I don't know. Kyle well, I use my egg. I don't know. Like, like, strawberries like... over there. <laughs> Kyle just, uh, yeah, chocolate strawberries. That's the way. Hey. Away from. All right. Uh, how's you guys' week? What have you been up to, Kyle? 
I had to get rid of that. It was chewing too much. I missed, but it's a candy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Mean? Yeah, it was just too much in my ears. You gave me a chewy. Like it, you can't even just you bite couldn't through. just finish it like an adult. You just spit it out Not for the next row. <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> on the floor, mind you. It was supposed to go in the garbage. Kyle, I think you played basketball. Yeah, that's played. tough. Played. That's tough. Okay, get back. Oh, speaking of playing old sports, saw you get put on the pads. Oh, lace them up. Shoot. Big Papa worked on the cardio. <laughs> yes. How'd that go? So, so we were short guys at practice and. I kind of got the idea from talking to the coaches like, man, these guys are kind of being soft. I feel like I could come in here and, you know, I haven't played, you know, it's been a minute. Well, here's the thing. I haven't played competitively in like six years at least, but I've always been a pretty hands on coach because I feel young and still able Mm -hmm. to do it. So with the younger age groups, I definitely throw on the bucket every now and then and like get in there and give them some work, you know, because the thing is with. I know what it's like to play football when you're a kid and when the coach says, yeah, you go against each other. As long as you both look like you're trying, but you're half-assing everything, then you get off the hook. You, you got that verbal agreement. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not getting hurt. You're not getting hurt. Yeah. We'll sweat a little. Exactly. Everyone knows how that goes. And I'm like, fuck that. You're going against me now and I'm going to give you this work. You better work on oh, me. No. <laughs> I'm going to body you. And now I'll go and you know I'll take everyone's rep and, and give them a, a good look. Um. So I've been doing that for a few years now. Okay. And I would say up into the midget group, which is like up to like 18 year olds. I mean, I was pretty good at doing it without even wearing shoes. So like, I don't even need cleats and I could usually body them pretty easily. So I was like, these guys are 17 to 22 grown men for the most part, some younger guys in there, but like they're kind of at the age that I played when I was in college. So out of respect, I'll put on cleats. If you didn't put on cleats, I would have stomped on your foot for them. You would have like, tried, that is so, but I'm too good at that. I'm that is st- so obnoxious. <laughs> if you want to wear sandals, you show up I to the practice, foot. full everything. Oh, barefoot. man. I played, I played team. I took team reps in bare feet against the midget kids all the time. I never wore cleats with them once, and I didn't have to. And they didn't step on my feet. They couldn't if they tried. You don't think I'm not aware of that? <laughs> Give me a break, Kyle. If you're, if you're playing on the line... Okay, keep going. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's completely disrespectful. I'm glad you put on the cleats. I put on the cleats to show yeah. them respect. These kids have been training their ass off. You know, there's some of them are pretty good. Um, but unfortunately, I dusted them. I've just been playing football for too long. <laughs> it wasn't even really fair, to be honest. Um, I think we did like one-on-one reps. I was like five for five. It wasn't even close. You sent, <laughs> I, sent me that video, and I was like, oh, man, that <laughs> offensive lineman needs to move. <laughs> Yeah, there there's some guys that need some help. Um and I took I took team reps on scout team. Um just cuz like I said we were short guys too, so like it wasn't even that was the the kind of the condition that made it okay for me cuz like it's a it's a more competitive football team, you know, we got to take things seriously. I don't want to take reps against away from guys that are actually still trying to make the roster. But we had so many guys out on the D-line that the guys that were taking reps as the starters that week they also were taking the scout team reps too. So I was like, what well, is a uh, scout team scout team? So basically and and uh, more competitive football team. So basically anything past high school, um, no one plays two ways anymore. Right. Yeah. So everyone has their designated offensive and defensive position. Now the starting defense will come up against the backup offense, but the backup offense players won't be running our offense. They'll be running the next week opponent offense. Mm-hmm. So through film study, we'll know what they do. We'll get our backups to execute those plays so we can see them in front of us. And with our film study and seeing it in front of us, we can be better prepared for what's to come. Um, that being said, flip it. Now you have the starting offense versus the backup defensive players, and we'll line up in formations that you'll typically see from the defense uh, that we're playing that week. Um, I did that. I just played scout team defense. Um, there wasn't enough guys to finish the whole thing anyway, so it didn't really matter. Hmm. But it was fun. I mean, yeah, I didn't lose at all, but <laughs> I was like, I, it was just like the technique and like the knowing your responsibilities. It was just like, it's, I don't know. It's just, a, it's clearly a big advantage. And I kind of like, I told the guys after practice, like, here's your learning lesson. I'm fucking 28 off the couch. Haven't been in the gym in at least two years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I, the gas tank is next to zero. Yeah. Like I've got like no cardio, not even like I, my warm up too. Cause like 
they're like, Coach, you gonna do the warm up with us? And I'm looking <laughs> at them like standing up, and I'm like, Ugh, like you guys are standing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, guys. I don't know if I have that. Like, I was just um, like, I was like, Ugh, like butt kickers. Ugh, like, I don't want to like burn myself out, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I looked at the trainer and I was like, ooh, there's a little, like, well, you know, a little stationary bike. I was like, ooh, let me get on the bike for a minute. <laughs> so I get on the bike. I'm like, ah. and I'm like, thirty seconds. I'm like, oh. I was like, yeah, I'm like, starting to sweat. I was yeah, like, all yeah. right, I'm done. And I was like, oh, you know what? I knew my whole career. I always had like tight hip flexors and stuff and tight groin so i always had to make sure i like stretched it a little bit um and like do some like uh they're called get offs uh basically it's just like when you get your three point stance and you just like explode out you know get the movements going get okay. the twitch muscles yeah, going yeah. just to get the grease you know the grease has been caked on for a minute like i feel slow but it was still okay and so i did like two <laughs> just, just two and what i was you like need. you know what i was like all right i'm like feeling it i sat on the bench again i kind of like leaned forward to get a bit of a groin stretch and then uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, i leaned forward yeah like i was like, <laughs> you the bench and i was like oh yeah, right there there it is that's it is. my favorite part is that you <laughs> counted it <laughs> it wasn't just like part of your routine like no 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 this is how i warm up yeah, yeah i, I lean forward and then i lean back well i mean like hey like the lion's the king of the jungle you don't see the lion stretcher yeah right? exactly yeah, like, she don't man. stretch come what on man yeah. it's just it's ready it's ready to go <laughs> yeah, exactly there's a lion and over so, here i was just like oh, i'm gonna gasp but i was like i'm gonna I'm, I'm a chill i'm a chill we still have like, a couple periods that i'm not really involved in like a like individual period i'm not gonna be doing the drills with them i'm just gonna make them do the drills and lead the drills um but yeah and then uh once we we're doing that stuff i was like guys i did fuck all <laughs> i haven't done this in years um i you guys are all stronger than me and some of you are stronger than me when i was in my prime like there's guys on this unit that put up 225 like 20 plus times and i'm like my best was 15 that's it mm, that's still pretty nice i mean yeah i was pretty strong for my size but yeah. like there's a dude that's literally shorter than me that does it like 20 times on the, like, he's like a little power lifter. And I'm like, these guys should, you know, be in much better physical shape. And I'll admit they are in better physical shape. I just know more yeah. and I'm better at it. Cause yeah, I've done it for like, technique at that point. <laughs> like an extra, like 10 years, probably on top of them. Yeah. Um, and I was like, guys, if you just take this as an example of why technique's important, someone as inferior as me as an athlete i'm not even gonna call myself an athlete you guys are athletes i'm not an athlete yeah i am a fat old coach now yeah. i have made the transition <laughs> like i'm like 50 pounds over my game weight like i'm i've made the transition to fat old coach um if i'm still better than you at this it's only because i know the technique mm -hmm. and i know the responsibilities yeah and i know what the reads are that is it so if you guys can understand that that's how important that is and that's how i went undefeated today with zero practice Focus on the technique and you will get so much better. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, that's, the only yeah, thing. that's a decent learning lesson yeah. at the end of the day, right? Yeah. It was like a little bit of like a, you know, an ego thing for me too. Of course. A narcissist, but. A hundred percent. But um, yeah, that's so why I said the little, the little cheeky clip in the group chat. I was like, yo, fat. But I, the best part too is I was making the guys die laughing because I didn't even put my phone away for this. I had my phone in my pocket the whole day of practice. <laughs> and like mid rep, I was like taking selfies and putting them in the fucking group chat so no. i can update my story mid practice <laughs> and the boys are like coach you're literally updating your story in the middle of a rep and i'm like i got this <laughs> <laughs> so like that was the disrespect like i wore yeah. cleats but i was still on social media the whole time oh man <laughs> so it was still a little disrespectful <laughs> yeah um there was this uh it was the very first rep too on the very first rep i've been okay so the thing is is as a defensive lineman, it's kind of like a pitcher in baseball. The guy in front of you is trying to block you. You got a couple moves that you have. It's like a pitcher. You have a fastball, curveball, and every time you go up, it's like, what, what are you going to give him? Are you going to give him your fastball this time? Is he ready for that? So the guy's got to kind of react to you, and you've got to try something to change it up, mix it up, keep him off his, on his toes, keep him off balance so that you can beat him. And then one, you know, that's just kind of keep him ready. Because the thing with uh, defensive linemen, you might take 60 snaps in a game. If you get three sacks, realistically, you only won three times out of 60. But that's a huge game. That's okay, a crazy yeah, yeah. good game. Mm -hmm. Three sack game is great. Um, so those three moments, you got to think there's three moments in a game where you can make a big difference, where you're not just a pylon there. 
you got to throw your money ball. You got to be able to identify that moment. Be like third and long. That means nothing to you, but <laughs> you know, it's third and long. Maybe games on the line. They need to get this first down. I'm going to throw my money ball now. I've had him set up for this all day. Let me give him something different he hasn't seen before. That's my go-to. It's my number one. It's the best move I have. Boom. Bank a sack. Huge play. You're a hero. Nice. Okay. So that's the idea. Yeah. Now, when you're younger, the thing is, is they only teach you like two different moves. A rip, which is like putting your arm under them and pushing them off you. A swim, which you put your arm over them to just go over top of them. Or a bull rush, you just push through. Okay. As you get older and you start getting to college and, you know, this even pushes further into the pros. Those are like one third of a component of the of an actual move. Interesting. Okay. So like it's that way more sense. complex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now I've been telling them, I was like, hey, guys, we need to get out of these habits. And like because some of the guys we're going against on our offensive line aren't that good, they can do things like just run really fast around them sometimes. And I'm like, you're not actually trying a move. You're just showing me you're faster than him by running in a circle. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Why don't you try a move like we've proven you've shown me you are faster and more athletic than him. We can do this. But we're not getting better by running around a pylon. We need to actually practice technique to get yeah. better. Um, and so one of the moves I was been telling them, I was like, guys, do this, do this, do this. Try it. It's just throw in your arsenal. It's, this is an easy one, too. Is in, instead of just running that full circle around them, you run really hard upfield. So he has to really extend himself to keep up with you. And then at the last second, you put your foot in the ground and you run straight through him because he's so like trying to keep up with you. Oh, yeah, he opens yeah. up his base. He opens up his chest to catch you. And he leaves himself with a weak base and I you see, just yeah. flatten him. And so I was telling him, guys, you guys can do this. You can set him up. Set him up for this. Even if you give him like a couple speed rushes, just run really fast a few times and he'll think, shit, he's going to do it again. He's ready for it. Mm -hmm. Guessing. And then you throw that in there. Boom. You can make him look stupid. But no one really got it. Everyone kind of fumbled with it and they just like it didn't work. And it was literally the first rep. I didn't say a word. I just lined up and I did it and I knocked this dude <laughs> straight on his ass and i just remember the slow motion his eyes open as he's falling on his bum the and i'm just like walking past him top the touch the quarterback set uh we have like a bag to simulate the quarterback just got him <laughs> <laughs> i was like guys that's what i've been trying to tell you for the last fucking month <laughs> mm. decent but uh yeah it was uh it was quite amusing uh i was pretty sore after back was a little tight forearm on this side was really tight for some reason um don't know why um it was uh but overall i didn't fuck up my ankles i didn't ruin my back and uh i was walking quite well the next day so let's nice. call that a win i yeah. yeah i'm not broken i did a couple of pull-ups about a week ago and i felt it for about four days oh no like not even kidding but that's like a you're isolating a muscle group yeah, right yeah. like that was like me that was too. like my wake-up call of like <laughs> oh I'm not that guy I used to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that guy. That was like guy. a casual thing. <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. You're no. not that guy. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was rough. Uh but yeah, man, that's uh that's kind of cool. It was uh it was a uh, pretty jokes jokes evening. I don't know if I'll do it anytime soon because uh I'm not trying to roll the dice. Yeah. It was risky. You got to it's it's just the wild card. You throw it out every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was good. Um Kyle, what about you? Anything happen to you this week? Uh not a whole lot. Oh, I went to uh the new the new ymca new one yeah oh uh downtown it's a decent gym it's really small it looks cool from the outside that's about it it's 16 dollar drop in 16 yeah to drop that's into insane. a gym i was i Do i you went get in, to also use the pool i i don't know i was only I there for an so. hour and, and a half. sauna yeah, like <laughs> I, I, I'd hope, I hope everything <laughs> but they asked me what i what i was doing i was like going to the gym they're like okay then they didn't say the price i just I had a twenty dollar bill, and then they gave me four bucks back. I'm like, "What? Like wow. that? Was, that was a twenty. And they're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "How much is it for a membership?" They're like, "Oh, twenty dollars bi-weekly. And I'm like, "Then how come you're charging six? <laughs> you should ridiculous. Know. I was that is absurd. I've honestly, I would say, you know, Matt's got more gym experience, but for me, I'd say the most I've seen is maybe like seven or eight dollars. Yeah, for a drop in. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a nicer gym, nine dollars something yeah, like that. Yeah, usually, yeah. but that's like yeah, the that's expensive wild. one. I'm I guessing egg wreck, and it's uh three bucks. Yeah, you go egg. to oh, wow. Yeah, you go to the poo gyms. It's yeah, it's like three bucks. Or if you have a friend, it's free. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, that's the thing. Even the the egg seed gym, it's way bigger. It's got really? way more hoop. <laughs> it's so much nicer, and all the this part really fucking pissed me off. Every <laughs> single hoop is at a different height in that gym. Why? There's Nine Wait. foot six inches, nine foot eight inches. All the side ones are just under nine, and they're all supposed to be ten. 
Yeah, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> that all, doesn't make it, sense. You would never want multiple sizes of hoop. You only want 10. It. I blame that for my bad shooting that day. Oh. But, <laughs> for sure. But, uh, He's eyeballing it, it the measurement. That's yeah, probably like nine feet over there. That's yeah. why. It's, this yeah. one's like clearly 8.5. Like, come on. Because yeah. like, we, had, we had guys that were like jumping up and they, they, got, they got good hops. But normally they're like just barely getting rim. And these guys are now almost throwing down easily. And I'm like, something's fucking up. Yeah. We, we measured it and they, they were all off. Oh, so that my. was dog shit. But uh, other than that, I didn't really... It was mostly just uh just the house taking care of uh well because Brittany has the the new job mm-hmm. so she's working pretty much every day mm-hmm. so I'm getting I've I pretty much got the whole being by myself with the kids thing down mm-hmm. and also doing more with that like cooking at the same time as having them not just be like okay I can't deal with this Th- throw on cocoa melon and fucking run away fuck is cocoa melon oh you don't want to know it's I, I, <laughs> oh, until the it comes know. it's <laughs> It's literally, it's, I don't know how long it is. It could, could be a hundred thousand hours. I don't know, but it's just, uh, basically a little kid and his parents and they walk around, they'll sing like baby shark and then clean, gross. clean your clothes, dude, dude. Yeah. It's gross. Caden, Caden's that that kind of stuff. I'm happy oh, so have you, a nightmare. have you ever heard of Bluey? Bluey, I have, I have. It might be a bit too old still. for them, but dude, it's actually like I sit down and watch Bluey with Caden. Is that like uh, Blue's Clues? No, 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 no. no. So New it's Bluey? like a, it's like a, it's a couple of dogs. Bluey is like a six-year-old girl. She has a younger sister, Bingo, and then their parents, and they're it's an Australian show. But Ooh. man, it's like it has actual decent jokes, and it's like. I don't know them playing games with their parents, and it's just like it's a lot more real than a lot of other shows I've seen. Like, yeah, I, I go out of my way to watch this with Caden, and I actually <laughs> laugh at this show. It's yeah, true. there there are actually a lot of good shows like that, like the the Cat in the Hat. It's uh, yeah. Martin Short voices it, but it's it's pretty good. It's mostly funny. It's good enough. The, <laughs> the Magic School low. Bus. <laughs> yeah. There, oh, reboot a, Magic School yeah. Bus. You gotta watch it's the lit. OG. No, yeah. we we watch both. Don't worry. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could stomach the reboot just because it's of not bad. The, reboots. Reboots better because of the Whoa. because if you go back and watch anything on VHS, us, <laughs> if you watch anything from the nineties, it sucks. Now it's it's good. <laughs> it's like good enough, but it doesn't have the graphics to make up for the lack of actual good uh quality footage it's just a nostalgic feeling that yes. you get from watching it that's yeah. it. So the new yeah. stuff they're like going into lava they're going you can do so much more because you can mm-hmm. actually uh get good graphics out of it yeah but yeah there are a couple of good shows but yeah, yeah check out blue better Bluey was Bluey's, speaking yeah, of kids night. shows did you guys see uh blues clues guy yeah steve mm. steve he i think the entire post- internet just started like crying that day man yo yeah. i was like God. I was like, I was never even into Blues Clues, but I just like I was old enough to know about it, and it's like, oh man, okay, yeah, yeah. he's back, and uh, thank you for that. I Realistically, I think I was off Blues Clues before he even left. So, yeah, yeah, I remember I... watching the episodes, but I also remember like I was probably too old for it or something like that, or I was like I wasn't into it, or it was just one of those things that were on yeah, TV. it was just like okay for me for a while. Yeah, I was like yeah. really into it for a minute, and then I just remember I was like, eh, I'm bored of this, and yeah. then I stopped watching it, and then I went back to it years later, and some other dude, I'm like. What the fuck happened, to Steve? <laughs> yeah. I'd like YouTube. What happened to Steve? Yeah, to see, yeah I like, never even knew that happened. Yeah, I wasn't even. I wasn't around for that either. It was yeah. just like I was already off it before that happened. I I only knew that he was off because a couple of years ago there was a meme that he left because he went bald. That was, <laughs> that was the only thing that I saw of him. But yeah, it's a nice so heartfelt funny. message. Yeah. yeah, it was uh, it was heartwarming. That's for sure. There's a nice. there's a video of Steve um online him telling some story i can't remember what he's on but he's telling a story and i'm probably gonna butcher it because i haven't seen this in a long time but um he was saying how he like met this woman and you know everything was kind of going well and he thought like this could be like a thing and then i guess he like gets back to her place or something and he thinks he's like gonna have a good night and she's like hey can you sign this She wanted him to come to her like niece's birthday party and be Steve from Blue's Clues. He's like, what the fuck? (laughs) You better be fucking after. (laughs) (laughs) I was just like, this is wild Mm. being that guy. But yeah, that's the thing. He did go really bald and he. You watch him. I saw him with the hat on and I'm like. Yeah, you don't want to show that off, eh? Yeah. Oh, so he had, did, didn't even clue into that. I had yeah. no idea about that. Yeah, he's he looked bald. like that uh, meme of the guy like, hello, fellow children yeah. <laughs> in the school. Yeah. He, just, he looked like he was 80 going on 12. Yeah. 
but he's he's actually a pretty funny guy like like it was it was interesting to see him like jump back into his character for a little minute there decent. and be serious just the way he was talking it was yeah. like oh no you're you are Steve yeah, yeah, yeah. right there like but cool. i've seen him on like even like jimmy kimmel or something and he was like actually like pretty funny and i was huh. like i bet like this guy would be cool to like hang out with actually he'd be all right he and you know he's not a total creep you know everyone always thinks oh you work on a kid show you're probably a pedophile yeah, like, yeah. mr rogers like who what the fuck man <laughs> mr rogers is a homie what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i was so hurt by he's that. the yeah, nicest no. human being as <laughs> yeah, ever been. That's there's like a done. documentary about him i think he's one of the first people to have like uh colored people on his on his show or yeah. something like that like it was yeah, a big he, deal and they sat in the same pool yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. okay. Brought I'm, sorry, on the guys. I'm sorry for you bringing that up as a joke. <laughs> talking about Barney, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Barney guy touched people, but I don't know. Yeah, there was some shit that happened with Barney. It shows are wild. Yeah, like, especially when you put on a costume because anybody could be in it. Like you could just switch creeps, it every man. time. Well, even uh, Blippy, he's got like a pretty dark past. I mean, you probably don't know who. Okay, he's just a <laughs> uh, internet dude that wears blue and orange, and he's ridiculous and like he's like a very bubbly character, and he just like prances around doing stupid shit. Uh, but he has like uh, like a darker past where he was trying to become internet famous and like he was doing these like pranks and I, I think he like either shit on someone or something to do with shit like something like pretty serious yeah like something Greg, serious to 100. yeah yeah so he was a vet and he had like an alter ego or something like that and that was the person he was trying to get famous what and then the he started doing this for his uh, yeah he started doing this for his nephew or something like that and then the just show just blew up oh so now he's God. like a millionaire basically just, just doing these stupid kid shows but just imagine yeah. waking up and you see an asshole <laughs> just he's shitting yeah, I, I on don't, you. Don't quote it's me like, on that, but there's something prank. fucked up that he did. <laughs> yeah, he, he did something fuck. But, like, how does that not uh, add into the cancel culture, right? Like, he's like a children TV celebrity. That's so fucked And, yeah, up. he did some fucked up things. Before. Not a big enough following. He he's got bigger. a huge following. Though. Is he? Oh, huge. Then, yeah. I love, I love pranks. I love it when people are fucking with people. I think it's funny. I'm all for that. But I'm an like, empath, man. I'm like, don't do that to them. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I love fun with people, but I just feel like when people go to that next level where they're like, all right, for this, we need human shit. Yeah. I'm like, no, bro. Yeah. That's too much. You've gone too far. Someone might stab you over this. Like, it's not worth it. Yeah. Like, don't do it. Or the the ones where they'll go into like a, a ghetto neighborhood and step on like somebody's Jordans. And then <laughs> I mean like, that's also and looking for they start, they start yelling at him, This is just a prank. You did it though. That's yeah, not yeah. a prank. Yeah. The prank would have been like pretending that you were gonna do it. Then that's a prank. You did it. You yeah, yeah. intentionally stepped on my shoe. It's not a joke, it's an action. Yeah. Like you actually did. Yeah. I um I knew some buddies in college and they told me the story that their high school football team got banned from going to play American schools. And the story that they told me was that uh in their hotel room. Someone took a shit in a paper bag and put it in the microwave and put it for like a long time and it blew up everywhere. That's fucked up. That's... And and I'm just like, what the fuck is yeah. wrong with you? That's insane. That's not. That's a like prank. psychopath that's levels. Like, like that's like you just made this unlivable. Where are you gonna stay now? Yeah. Are you expecting your coach to find you a new facility? What the fuck? Yeah, like, that's, that's fucked up. The so... mentality to go through with it. It's like it's yeah. one thing to be like, you know, it'd be hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joke like, about it. Then the guy just comes out of the bathroom with a bag. Like, yo, this is gonna be really funny, right, guys? Like, no, <laughs> right? it's no longer funny, right? Like, you just shit in a bag and held that bag in front of me. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Stop. And and no one's sitting there like, are we actually? doing this everyone's just like yeah yeah mm -hmm. like I, what i saw a guy do uh you know two different mcdonald's stories with that i know <laughs> one kid that went into the the urinal but a, another kid i was just sitting there uh i don't remember i was with somebody we were watch, uh watching this guy he was kind of making a fuss but he was he went into the washroom and he came out and he had this mcchicken box in his hand and he just kind of walked past us and a bunch <laughs> of people were recording him no. so i'm like oh something's going on so he comes up to the front no. and he's like, um, ma'am, uh, something's wrong with my burger. And they're like, oh what? He's like, it God. just, it doesn't have chicken on it. And then they're like, what do you mean? This? I have no idea who this man was, but <laughs> hands it to her and she opens it and she's like, what the fuck? Get out. And he's like, but I, I ordered a McChicken and this is what I got. She's like, you clearly didn't get this. Like, this isn't what happened. And he's so fucking stressed out right now. <laughs> legitimate 10 minutes he sat there with arguing with them like just no i didn't do that i just i ordered a, chi a mcchicken and this is what and meanwhile he's caught the log on the yeah. bun in front of them everyone can smell that 
can see that yeah. the texture I'm just, just triggered right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, like no. Like, bro. Can you imagine just having the, the mentality move. where you were okay with knowing that you're completely in the wrong, you did everything wrong, and you're gonna argue with somebody that they have to give you a mick chicken at that point? Like, Jesus, I can't man. imagine. No, I like, fucking runs a hedge fund now. <laughs> 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 that's the kind of people Pyramid who do that. Scheme. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jesus. so that's fucking weird. Huh. Speaking of weird shit teenagers do, there was a headline that I sent to you guys that we need to discuss. Okay, <laughs> before we go any farther, as time goes on, I'm here learning about weirder and weirder shit because of, because of this show. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> yeah, Consider it an education. I don't yeah. want any part of your algorithm. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you're never allowed to use I my know. phone. My phone now is associated with that stuff, and it's gonna send me fucked up stuff now. My algorithm is snacks <laughs> and <laughs> and bullshit. Yeah, snacks and bullshit. Um, so. Welcome to our new podcast, Snacks and Bullshit. <laughs> Snacks and Bullshit. Uh, coming to us from the lovely United Kingdom, we have a 15-year-old boy who is sitting at home one day, and he thought, how big is my penis? I mean, he probably knows from, like, an eye test, but, like, how big is it? Like, you know. And so, like, as a male, I think at some point in our adolescence, most of us thought, I've heard about people measuring their dicks with rulers. Maybe I should do that. Well, unfortunately, this guy was like, I don't have a ruler. Or, you know what? I'm just making that up. Maybe he was like, nah, fuck a ruler. I got a better idea. Yeah. Like, I don't know what his thought process was, but he came to the idea that he would use a USB charger cord for a phone. Now, yeah, okay. That sounds okay. Now, we're all, okay. Does, we're all familiar. Does it have inches on the cord? Well, realistically, you'd have to measure it comparatively, and then you'd have to take that to a ruler anyway. So, like, I feel like there's an extra step there that's not yeah. necessary. He just wants to mark off the thing or something. Like, yeah. hey, I'll measure this yeah. later. I now know, right? Yeah, exactly. He just has a has a reference. Exactly. Um, and he, and, you know, he doesn't have to like take the ruler into the bathroom or anything. He can just like come up with his cord and do this in front of his parents or yeah, something. Yeah, super and casual. Like, what you just think how long it is? Whatever. You know, it's better than just like. But anyways, not the point. <laughs> the point is, we're all familiar with a USB cord. Yeah. Long, cylindrical, uh, but it has two very hard-edged objects on either side that usually uh, are the part that go into the wall, right? Um, oh, I mean, I guess I'm kind of jumping the gun. He didn't think about just, like, going side to side. He thought about shoving it in his dick. Yeah. That was the part that I missed. So, so, the, so the, the first part, the we, part. <laughs> yeah, we could have just taken the cord and put it next to said penis and then measured it that way. But he was like, no, no, no. No, there's more dick inside yeah, me, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, he knows there's more dick inside. Yeah. How deep can this go? Yeah. So, naturally, like, he goes to insert it. A little hard to tell. <laughs> Not quite sure. Right. I, there we go. That's, now I know yeah. the height. There yeah, we yeah, go. yeah. That's the only way that's to know. That's the true measurement. Right? You just go until you bottom out. And, exactly. Mm. Once you bottom out, then you know you're there. Yeah. But here's the thing. Pull it out, give it to your friend. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? How do you just shove that in there? And so as I'm thinking that, how do you shove that very hard? And, you know, one side's obviously smaller than the other. But even that smaller side, I'd be like, fucking I'm, ow. Yeah, I'm very uncomfortable yeah. about this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> My like, skin is crawling. Yeah. And so as you read the article, you find out that he, he had thought of that. And he's like, well, here's my way around it. What if I take the cord? Fold it in half to create some kind of soft edge like that and insert it that way. So now you're putting two in there. Double wide, yeah. Double wide. Which, I mean... Well, double whammy. <laughs> what the fuck? And so at a certain point, he's got two US ends of the USB dick. <laughs> Sorry, USB <laughs> dick. <laughs> he he's, does have a USB dick. He has dick. a USB dick. He can plug himself in and yeah. plug himself <laughs> out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... What would that do to your psyche, first of all? Can you really take a moment to think, how does my mental health adjust to this image of two USB cords coming out of my dick in a time where we think the government has chips in us yeah. and they're tracking us mm -hmm. and all this electronic... He's on body. board, man. He's like, I'm going cyborg. He, yeah, <laughs> and he's like, is this VR? Like, <laughs> yeah, plugged into the Matrix. <laughs> so with this, did did he just tell them that he was measuring or like did they... I think at that point... He confessed to the yeah, doctors it's like, his mom I'm left. Fucked. <laughs> I, <laughs> I fucked up. I feel like... He might have been faking that, and he, he, because, like, any normal person, they know to measure on the outside, just <laughs> well, in general and things, but, like, is that, like, a kink? 
is that something that like people do like outside of this because like with kids now there's there's so much porn and shit maybe he saw it and was like let's give it a try yeah but he's never gonna be like oh yeah mom doctor yeah i was just seeing how it felt having something inside my dick hole i really feel like it's not necessarily like i want to measure the length of the inside of my dick i've just kind of like I wonder if I can stick this in my dick. <laughs> like, oh, how far can it go down? And then, oh, wait. Like, oh, huh? no, I can't get it out. Like, <laughs> this quarantine has been so through. boring. Yeah. <laughs> I need something it's new. the newest TikTok trend. It's such a weird thing. <laughs> Fuck. You <laughs> heard of Tide Pods. <laughs> we'll talk about TikTok trends in a minute. Um, it's just such a weird thing to conceptualize because I'm just like, man, like, I've talked, Kate, okay, I don't necessarily talk about my kinks or other people's kinks with guys. I mean, I can say that the three of us have never shared that conversation of our Not personal lives. And that's cool. I never wanted to. So like, we're good. There's no there's no reason for me to ask. We've been friends for like 15 years and i don't even say happy birthday to you i'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what's going on in the bedroom. <laughs> like we just don't talk about that and that's cool like you don't have to um but like i've talked to i mean typically these are like old guys that have had health problems but they've told me about their experiences and horror stories of getting like a catheter just like when they shove like a tube up <sighs> yeah. your dick oh, yeah. and i'm just like no 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 yeah. That sounds terrible. And that's what it's designed for. Yeah. And now you're talking about a foreign object. Yeah. That like. Two of them. <laughs> this is dry. Double like unless you grease the pipes like that would yeah. fucking hurt, dude. Like, no. Yeah. When and, I was sick and stuff, uh, I had to have catheters. But <sighs> if you if you get them, take like they basically say, hey, if you feel like you're good, wait two days and then we'll take it out. Because if we take it out and it's too early, we got to put it back in. And you can't go under for that. We need to just put it back in. And oh, that is not going to be good. No. The doctors say it's going to be terrible. Oh, my so God. I feel like this 15-year-old hasn't quite got his PhD yet. So I feel <laughs> like it might hurt a lot more. Bro. Yeah, it's just it's so fucked up. And so anyways, um, I know that he said he was uh, measuring his dick because apparently uh, he waited for his mom to leave. So that he could like be honest with the doctor because they're like, clearly you don't want to say something in front of her. But once she was gone, he's like, yeah, I was just trying to measure my dick. Just like, what, what, what was his first excuse? <laughs> I, like, he was like, I tripped. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was charging my phone and I, I fell. fell, like, on the trip, stairs, fell yeah. landed on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the reason why he ended up going to the hospital, I mean, obviously you could assume that it didn't go well. Um, as, as it got further in there they found on the MRI that the back end of the cable got tangled in a ball and his scrotum. And so he couldn't actually pull it out because it was literally balled up like how your headphones get tangled in your pocket. Oh. That happened to the wire in his fucking balls. In his Holy fuck. Jesus. That's actually insane. That's terrifying. And so he couldn't get it out. And so oh. he started pissing blood naturally. Yeah. And uh, that's when they're like, okay, maybe we should go to the doctor. You're peeing blood now. Like, what? Not that you had a fucking cord stuck in your dick, but because you started peeing blood, that was the line? Yeah, no, what's if, the time if I, had a, if I had a cord stuck in my dick, I would exhaust all options <laughs> before asking my mom to drive me to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like, like just casually going to the hospital real quick? Like, <laughs> like, can I, like can I uh, borrow the car? No, I can't walk. <laughs> I can't walk. Wild. So what's the time Please frame don't hit that speed between bump. when he does it to when he goes to the hospital? I mean, I'm going like, to assume. Is it like the same night? It like, probably oh, fuck. was like that day. Okay, yeah. I'm going to assume. It's in my Jesus. head. The story plays out, and like it's what he did this morning on his weekend, and then he just like took care of this. Uh, my mind's going to like the parents, like right after it's dealt with, and it's like, oh, he's gonna be okay. Just making fun of him so much. Like if I was his parents, <laughs> that's, I'd make fun of that for the rest of his life. Like, hey, we got some actual measuring tape here if you need. Like, don't don't <laughs> just ever rulers go back. everywhere in the house after that. <laughs> that's so. But in case you need to measure anything. Right. But you always get them like the really small measuring tapes because you always got to add the small dick joke element to that. Mm. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, the way the story ends is um, the doctors had to make an incision below his balls and in his gooch before his asshole. And they had to cut him up there and they had to snip the cord and they had to slide it out. <sighs> I have never been so uncomfortable. <laughs> Can you imagine? I thought you were going to say they pulled it through that hole because then the <laughs> big parts of the USB have to come clamp together. 
Can you imagine if they're like, don't fuck with me, Jimmy? And they're like, fucking yeah. pulled it that way. You see this? <laughs> oh, I like, got like a violin. <laughs> fucking inside oh. out that shit. Oh. Uh, anyways, that's disgusting. Um, But yeah, so uh, that feeling, I'm just imagining that feeling of something sliding out that direction. Like, the, Yo, I mean, at least the right direction. It's a crazy feeling. Like having, <laughs> yeah, I don't like, want to hear having it. Having a cabin. It, <laughs> we it's have just, firsthand experience. We need to embrace no, it's it for education. It's... <laughs> It's honestly, it's not even like a, it's not a pain or anything. It's just, uh, it's an emptying. Yeah. Like, it's a, like, it's just, they basically, they're like one, two, three, and then it's a, and then it's finally out, and you're like, it was three oh. hand lengths. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, was... that's why you use a USB because it's so long. <laughs> Kyle's like, yeah, I'm fucking huge. Hey. <laughs> it has to go all the way into like you gotta tie it and not grab another one. <laughs> fucking magician, he's pulling it out. Holy shit! How For long my next is trick. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls a coin out of my ear. <laughs> why do we spend so much time on the podcast talking about dick? Like, it's just I mean, like, that's that's quite the story. Dick's a dick. It's just the way it goes. Um. <laughs> Update to that Gabby Petito story if you guys didn't uh didn't so, hear. So, yeah, I have like gone out of my way to not hear any of it. Mo- mostly because I try and like not read the news cuz it's I all mean, bullshit, but then also partially because of the podcast. So, yo, it's fucked up. Okay. <laughs> YouTube YouTube girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her boyfriend mm-hmm. go on a little road trip. Yeah. They vlog in the whole thing. Okay. They go on, they're gone for like, I think, I feel like they're gone for like a couple months. So they didn't actually exact, I mean, they probably said, but I didn't read that part because it wasn't too important. But basically, he comes back from the little road trip by himself. Doesn't say a word. Ten days later, she's still not home. File mm. missing persons report. He's not talking to cops. He's refusing to talk to anybody except his lawyer. What the fuck happened, bud? I think his name's like Brian or something like that. What happened, Brian? And he's fucking just Brian. <laughs> and he's just fucking quiet about it. And then um a video gets released of there was um a cop pulled them over for speeding on the freeway. And she's like crying the whole time and he's kind of just like cold, dry, whatever. And they were having a big fight and I guess they had like smacked each other. She smacked him. Apparently he didn't smack her, but I heard something else say that he, uh, someone saw him smack her. So hmm. that's up in the air, but it was kind of like a domestic thing but then you know the cop was gonna like um i think he was gonna charge her but then they're like no 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 it wasn't a domestic thing we don't want any charges it was just like a mental mental break like we're good we just we love each other we're engaged like don't worry about it okay all right he sends them on their way um and then that's the last time anyone sees her alive wild and now they have the big update a couple days ago or maybe just yesterday um, it was that her b- uh, body was found in the place that they were visiting, and it, they're pretty confident. Like they still need final autopsy, but they're like pretty confident yeah. it's hers. Today, today they confirmed it. They, oh, did they? They this found the body a couple days ago because uh, a different YouTuber had. They were doing travels through there and saw the same van and kind of oh. tipped off the cops. Hey, this is I think where they were. Yeah, I think they wanted to be anonymous because they might have known the people. I don't yeah. know, but then uh, as of I think nine days now the boyfriend has just went missing he's yeah. gone they can't oh, find him anywhere he's whoa. hiding he's the only primary uh suspect that they've named and they can't find him and he disappeared like a couple days before the body was found so he technically wasn't like being charged with anything like yeah, murder yeah. or anything because they didn't know if she was alive or if she just disappeared yeah but now yeah he's missing so how of suspect pretty Wow, it's pretty easy to kind of put two and two together here, like, yeah. right? We went on vacation. I came home alone. Body found dead days later, and I didn't say anything. Yeah. I just left. So here's like my only bit of experience because my mom actually was kind of talking about it, and I was like, tell, telling her to not to give me any details. <laughs> but this was kind of her opinion, I guess. Bef- anyway, this was just before the actual body was found. Yeah. But so like in America specifically, you have the fifth and you have the sixth. So the fifth amendment is the right to not say anything, and the sixth amendment is the right to a lawyer. So. People are assuming that he is guilty because instantly he's not talking to anyone except for his lawyer um, when there's nothing guilty about that. Like if all of a sudden something probably did happen and maybe he knows the true story, he doesn't. it's in his best interest to not tell anyone because the story is going to get twisted the second he opens his mouth. Anything he says. Especially if he says it wrong because he's not a lawyer. Exactly, yeah. So he could be upset and nervous, doesn't know how to explain it correctly. The first word that comes out of his mouth doesn't matter. People are going to paint a picture, right? 
So it like it's understandable that mm. he's not saying anything and kind of avoiding all of this because he's waiting for like his lawyer to be able to actually talk about this properly and actually make a make a statement, right? Yeah. Um, but no, hearing this, he fucking did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, like going Why wouldn't you call the cops though? <clears throat> If I'm on vacation with my girl and something terrible happens, yeah. If I'm out of range and I get back into range or something, the first thing I'm doing is calling the police. Yeah. Somebody, please come help me. I don't even think I'd be capable of making a proper decision after the fact. I'd be so so hysterical. Yeah. Well, like they got into a big argument. They break up. She's like, "Fucking pull over right now." She gets out, walks away, and he drives home stone cold. Like, fuck this bitch. Right. I'm not. I'm not picking her up. We just broke up. Whatever. He goes all the way home tries to call her or something like that no answering and then all of a sudden he hears in the news about all this shit go to the lawyer right away right like oh fuck this does not look good for me yeah like, so actually, that's that's understandable right yeah like, now that you're saying that it uh it, it reminded me because i know with uh with I've, I've seen different lawyers on like youtube and stuff kind of just yeah. talking about talking with cops if if you ever talk with a cop what you said is permanent record yeah. and they can take that as your word mm -hmm. what a cop says doesn't mean anything even yeah. even if they're like interrogating yeah. somebody and and they say hey if you just tell me that dustin did it then i can get you a, a lenient sentence yeah, yeah, and yeah. then when it comes down to it what they th that what they said doesn't matter yeah. yeah so you can get this exact same penalty it doesn't matter so mm -hmm. when you're saying maybe he just did talk to his lawyer to avoid it that sounds right it just it's really it's either just mismanagement by the lawyer by not putting out a statement when yeah, like a everything's going viral, the entire world is talking well, Western culture, <laughs> the entire world. We are the world, don't worry. But <laughs> everybody's talking about it, and you're just radio silent. Like silence is deadly. Like that's yeah, that's, that's the sus. that's 2021. Is yeah. silence is deafening or whatever well, the fuck they say. I guess the rationale is like if they if he didn't know what happened to her, say they got in a fight. Why would you leave her out there? One, but say they got in a fight. And he's like, "I'm going home." She's like, "Fine, I'll find my own way home." Mm -hmm. Fuck you, cool. And then he finds out that she's dead. He should be a remorseful. He should be, you know, tragically sad. Well, people handle trauma in different ways too, though, right? But he should also be like, right. "I have no idea what happened. We had a fight. I went home. She said she was going to go find her own way home." You could just say that. And then at least there's some kind of perception that maybe he's lying. Maybe he did still do it. Yeah. But and at the I, very least, his story is, I have no idea what happened to her. Yeah. I left Again, her. though, like your words can be twisted, right? Like it's yeah. so many. That has happened so many times, right? Where like just wrong conviction because the general public assumes something. So it's, it's just it's like don't uh, say a fucking thing because at the end of the day, you're probably going to end up going to court about this to get it all resolved. Just wait for the court, and that's when you actually release the information because you don't want anyone else knowing about this, right? Because it yeah, could be fucked. They have that with uh, with like doctors or nurses. If something goes wrong and they apologize to the family, it that could like if yeah, they say, yeah, "Oh, yeah. I'm I'm so sorry that this happened," and blah blah blah, that could be interpreted as they admitted that they were at fault. They're taking that blame, so right? then they yeah, can you... get sued for something that might not have been malpractice. It might have just something bad happened but yeah. they they used the wrong words at the wrong time yeah so i think if he is talking to his lawyer it could be the lawyer that puts out the statement of what happened being missing for the eight nine days is like he might not be communicating with that lawyer anymore yeah that's <laughs> a bit odd, that's right? where it's like okay. um yeah because like then the next question is did he go home and hire a lawyer right away or did he happen to have a lawyer and then yeah. he goes there like let's let's go back to the innocence one for a second and he goes to his lawyer and like Hey, just thought I'd run this by you. I just had a big fight with my girlfriend. I haven't seen her in a while. Like, just thought I'd let you know. And then all of a sudden, the social media buzz starts happening, right? So, like, there's still that possibility, but like, fuck. Ah. I don't know. I look at his ah. face. I'm like, you fucking did it. Uh, <laughs> just look, look at those fucking eyes. Yeah. Murderer eyes. Who's, who who does the little bitch fucking running away, going missing? Was it a great time for a camping trip, Brian? <laughs> fucking Brian. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, no service. <laughs> <laughs> no Oops. service. Um, wow. Did you guys see that uh, video I sent you guys of the dude that um, proposed to his girlfriend at a game and she ran away? Oh, yeah. That's the worst nightmare <laughs> I could ever imagine. I I don't know how anybody proposes in front of a like a room full of people. Like, they're not even a room, a stadium of people yeah. on the Jumbotron. Nobody cares about you there. They're hoping that she says no. So they can laugh at you. Like, I couldn't. Well, understand. yeah. So the girl, it's like, you should have said yes. And then in, behind the scenes, yeah, sorry. I just don't want to embarrass you. But no. 
Um, but like, what was their relationship like? Like, was it like kind of falling apart? And he's like, oh, this will uh, this will get us together. I'm going to marry her. I feel like anytime I see a video of a guy proposing and the girl being like, what the fuck? My brain goes to this place. What was his communication level and how out to lunch in their relationship was he? Exactly. Because yeah. Like, he's just on a different level. Like he has like, no idea what the real relationship is. Like I'm not about to propose to my girlfriend anytime soon, but we've talked about it several times in yeah. the time that we've been together. And to A, do something in public, is there are they the type of person to be okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> you probably should have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's applicable to more than just this scenario. Um Two, are they ready to get married? Are they as much into you as you are into them? Like, if you can't say absolutely yes and have reasons, like rationale behind it that you've seen in action, not just like a casual word, what are you doing? Like, are you just that like head over heels? You thought like you just confess your love? She'd be like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Like, just what? playing the game of life, man. It's like, oh, that's just the next card I pull. I just, I guess it's time to get married. And this is the person in front of me. Like, if you actually have good communication with your partner. Yeah. You would know if that was a good idea, yeah. and you would know if the mm -hmm. time was right, and you would know if she would say yes. Can you imagine being that girl though, and like <laughs> everybody's looking at you, and you're like, "There's no way I'm marrying you." Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, even if I wanted to, doing this, like, I don't want this at all. Like, hey, maybe try again anywhere else. Yeah. Like that's she's thinking. Like I could have written. Like I could have made this go on for about another year, maybe. Not really too happy, but no, you gotta, you gotta leave now. The question yeah. is, does he stay for the rest of the game? <laughs> <laughs> Someone like buys him a beer. Everyone yeah. in the arena yeah. is like, "Bro, here's a beer, here's a beer." Yeah, he just gets wrecked in his seat. Seriously, I just think like if that were me, and I did that, and she said no, I feel like it'd be like we like go talk about this somewhere else like you don't have to like run away from me like i'm a fucking creep like we maybe he was a fucking creep <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? with them? yeah. But that's the thing if she says no Girls and get she bored, sits man. there like everybody's gonna start booing her like why would you say no to him and, like in, in public you're humiliating him that was probably her, her best bet is just to get out leave and yeah. then like talk about it some other time yeah i've seen some too where they're like can we not do this here can we just like can we go talk somewhere else yeah and they yeah. like don't want to do in public he's like no no like we're doing this here right now i need to know right now and then she's like no and he's like Ugh. yeah <laughs> i feel like guys always need that like label and ultimatum kind of thing like oh if i just set them up in this situation mm. it's a yes or a no and they're gonna say yes and then we're gonna be happy <laughs> ever after right like that's just True. how it works man i i think it's funny because I definitely know guys like that. Yeah. But I just, I don't share those feelings. No, no, like, no. It's a fucked up way of thinking. And I feel like it's not like a manipulation thing, but in their mind, it's like, well, if she has no choice but to say yes. Of course, it's the right answer in that right moment. Right. Like, of course, it's a perfect scenario. I think it has to do with a certain like level of control or something. Cause like, I don't like, and, and not just saying like they're controlling, but like they like want to be in control of their life and they think that things, if they don't have a label, might be out of control. Like, yeah. A feeling like that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Insecurity, man. Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, you know, even in my own relationship, it's like, I don't give a fuck what you do. There's no like, there's no like rules. We don't talk about rules. It's you're doing this. Cool. I'm doing this. Cool. Yeah. Like. And a couple of humans hanging out. <laughs> exactly. It's like, and as far as like the whole like title of like marriage and stuff like that, I'm like, I like the idea. I'd be down to do it when the yeah. time is right, when it's appropriate. But like, if you don't want to get married, I mean, if we're still good years later and this is what we're doing you just don't want to get married i mean label doesn't really mean a whole lot to me I don't yeah really in care. this day and age it's like man what is marriage it's a tax break <laughs> 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 what else is it like what else is it you get you get you get to change up your taxes man it's a yeah. good way to pick up debt hey <laughs> it's a fucking awesome day though yeah yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. that day is fucking sick awesome just a lot i don't money. remember it i was drunk as fuck but <laughs> <laughs> no that was a stipulation of the wedding i had to remember the entire time yeah the only one that doesn't remember the wedding is our boy ryan because fucking ryan got hammered at the pre-drink and he oh, literally no. like went for like a nap and then he passed out and he was gone for the entire ceremony the entire no. time. missed the whole thing shout out to ryan you're still a waste man by the way <laughs> <laughs> all right that was uh kyle's wedding was quite an event I my wedding was sick 
I'm pretty sure that was, that was honestly like no no cap. That was probably one of the best weddings I've ever been to. Like it's not like I think most people would agree that we're there. I'm it pretty was unreal. I'm pretty confident. I told this story like on the like old days of the podcast when yeah. we we're still like filming in Kyle's or not filming recording in Kyle's garage. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell it again yeah, just because it was mm-hmm. it's it's pretty it's pretty intense. It's honestly probably one of the most intense days of my life. Where like. Have you ever even heard about the shit that went down at his wedding? No. Uh, oh my god, time. Matt. Good time. Holy shit. So Kyle did me the honor of asking me to be his best man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And naturally, I was like, "Of course, I got you." I've seen a couple of pictures, and it looks like yeah. you guys had fun. Yeah, oh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Honestly, when I was I was looking at the best man, and I'm like, Dustin's Dustin was by far the longest. He just friend. is the best man. And like at the time, he was he had finally been back from school, so it was a couple of years after that. But I was. The main point, I was like, there's no way he can fuck anything up because he doesn't drink. He doesn't yeah, smoke. Yeah, yeah. He'll be cool the Actually entire time. responsible. Won't forget anything. <laughs> yeah. Have the full game plan set. Foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> a little, little red herring there. Okay, so this was the agenda I was given. We're going to show up. We're going to get uh, ready. There's going to be a photographer come to the best ma- or to the groomsman room. Watch us get ready. Take pictures of us getting ready for like pictures and everything. And then at some point, we're going to go down, um, me and the maid of honor are going to go down to the whole like dress reveal thing or some shit that they were doing where she, the first like, look, the first the look, first yeah, look yeah. that's what it's called. And then the bride and groom are going to take off and go take photos in the forest for a little bit. Yeah. Me and the maid of honor are going to go back to our rooms, finish up, get ready, um, grab the ring and head down to where we're going to get set up for the ceremony. That was the schedule I was given. I had that mapped out in my head. I was super focused on that. Well, um, when we go do the first look, things got changed. Do the first look. Everything is cool. And then they're like, hey, do you two just want to come take photos with us? Oh. And I'm like, okay. Didn't think anything of it. I'm like, sure. Yeah. It's not, it didn't seem weird at all. Okay. But it was out of my order, mm-hmm. which means that decisions I had made earlier th- yeah. that have effects. Yeah. Um, and so everything's good. Next couple hours, we're having fun, uh, taking pictures, and then we go down, <clears throat> um, to, I think uh, we go back to the place to pick up the rest of the groomsmen to go to the ceremony, and we drop off the maid of honor, and she goes back with her girls and the ma- uh, bride, and they do their thing. Now we go down to the ceremony. We figure out where we're gonna stand, where we're gonna set up. Everything's good, and as we're sitting there, and people start to come and sit down in their seats. I'm like patting myself down. I'm like, I don't have the fucking ring. No. I left it in my bag yeah. because I thought I was going back to the room yeah. to grab the ring and yeah. come to ceremony. But because we went and took pictures, that part of the plan got hopped over. And now this is moments after <laughs> they're like, oh, the, the girls have arrived. They're getting ready. They're going to come down in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. Like they're literally like they've left already because it was like a little bus ride up, like where we okay. had the ceremony okay. from where the place you was. You know where Manning? Yeah. So we were at Lightning Lake. Okay. Yep. Yep. So it's like a like a, a two, three minute drive up that hill to where the ceremony was from yeah. where our cabins were. Oh, so like when he yeah. said like they're coming, I'm thinking like clock's ticking. I don't really have any time left. <laughs> but anyway, so I didn't even get a chance like to tell Kyle right away. It was just like I was I started feeling myself. I was like and then she's like, gears start turning. I start walking the crowd. I'm like, keys, keys, keys. I need some fucking keys. Yeah, act Someone now. give me your fucking car right now. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't know any of you. I don't give, give me your fucking car. And Kyle's like, whoa. <laughs> I, I saw he was the whitest I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm like, oh, this chick. I'm like, no questions asked. Somebody drive him yeah. or give him keys. Whatever. He, he, he does. He's like kind of like for a minute. He's like, what happened? And I just look at him like, I left the ring in the room. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, he's, he's just like. Just stone face. Don't know what to react to. Yeah, we're always about we're all about composure. <laughs> Both of us are just like. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, keys, keys, keys. Some old guy steps up, and he's like, "I my car's right there." I'm like, "Let's go, boss, right this way." And then I'm like, he like starts like, "Hi, my name's," and I'm like, "I really want to get to know you, but we're gonna do that in the car because I need to ask <laughs> you to run right now. We need to fucking run. There's like a little small field between us and the yeah, parking yeah, lot. Yeah, let's do this on the jog, bro. Like, yeah. let's go." So anyways, we go whipping down there and it was just like, it was like, you know, it was double O Dustin. I have my fucking, you know, fancy little sports car because this guy's some rich white dude. 
He was in, parked in like a very convenient place. If there was a nice camera back there, it would have looked sick as we slide into his new whip. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was, I don't even know he's driving, but it was like a nice little sports car. It was mm-hmm. pretty sweet. Anyways, we get in and as we, I'm like, we need to bomb. And so it's like down this hill. And then in reality, there was like a long road that you'd have to go around mm-hmm. to get into the parking lot to yeah, get yeah. back to the cabin. But that road goes around the cabin. So I was like, don't even go around there. Pull up on the side of the road. I'll jump the ditch, climb the hill, and I'll run into the fucking cabin from there. Like, we don't need to go all the way around. I'll just jump it. Stress. Anyways, we we kind of, like, got to know each other a little bit in the car. And I, I feel like that's a story we'll both remember forever. Yeah. But anyways, um, I was driving. I was like, give me your fucking car. I fucking burn down there. I get to the spot. I just, like, stop. I don't even turn the car up. I just like put it in park for a second. I'm like, turn it around. And I get out of the car and I start running. Jump the hill. And I'm doing this in a suit, by the way. Yeah, that's what I'm picturing here. I'm doing this in a suit. So many things could have gone wrong. Yeah. I could have fallen at every moment. Yeah. I'm not that athletic. I was already out of football. I wasn't even that athletic when I was playing. So like, <laughs> I was a lineman. So the fact that I jumped this like six foot ditch, didn't get any scuffs on my pants, got up the hill, wasn't dirty at all. I was like, cool, nice. Didn't rip my pants. Um, run in there, grab the thing. I come down. I'm running towards that ditch, and it's like the level's like pretty off too, like the height of where. And I basically just jump, and somehow land it, just clean, boom, nailed it. Superhero land. Didn't rip my fucking. Superhero. Pants. Land. <laughs> <laughs> Superhero. Didn't rip my pants again. No fall. Nothing's wrong. Wow. I'm just sweaty. Yeah, yeah. He had already whipped the car around. I hop in, and he's like. Wee! And now he's peeling out. I'm like, let's go. But as we were driving down, the girls passed us in their fucking bus. And I was just like, oh, no. I see Brit. I see the girls. And they're all like, oh, who's that leaving already? That's weird. And I'm just like flying. Anyways, by the time we rip back up there, the girls have like um, started to get things settled up. Um, Britt was like, I think already in her position with her pops or whatever. Yeah. Um, they were up on, up on the hill and they were going to walk down the stairs. Okay. Through. Okay. And the girls were already in a position where they could, I think they were, they were going to meet me because the, because the, yeah. bride, the everyone was going to come down and yeah, hold yeah, hands yeah. as we walked down. Um, and I am sitting at the <laughs> altar, dress the fuck out because I have a wife that is very organized. Like. <laughs> They they gave us a wedding planner. Yeah. And she's like, okay, what do you need me to do? And Britt just dropped this fucking big old book. And she's like, this. <laughs> do this and nothing else. You, we don't need any more help from you. Just this. Just do so this. So very organized, very meticulous. Yeah. And so, I'm worried if I'm going to have a <laughs> ring or not. And so I come flying in and I'm just like, drop me off there. Drop me off there. And he comes, boom. I get out of the car and he goes and finds a park spot. I'm flying across the grass now, full stride, and I just see Kyle, and I just give him the nod, like, I got you. Yeah. And he's just, he's just saying, I just hear this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, hear, I just see the exhale Finally able chest. to breathe. And so I run up the hill, and, I, and I, I'm like, boys, boys, check me out. Am I good? Am I good? Like, did I fuck something up? How's my back? Did I rip anything? And everyone's like, you're surprisingly clean. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm like sweating, and I'm like, they're like, yeah, you're just a little sweaty. That's it. <laughs> I was like, oh, we pulled it off. This we time. expected that. We're okay. <laughs> and then I'm like, somehow we're okay now. I'm where I need to be. I've got the ring. Everything seems fine. And then as I'm walking down the, the aisle with uh, the maid of honor, we're like smiling for the camera, holding hands or whatever. And I'm just like, you have no idea what the fuck just is. <laughs> 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 like, oh. I was so stressed out. And the rest of the wedding went uh, as expected. Well, when uh, when they asked, oh, can you bring the rings? All of us kind of looked at each other like, <laughs> can we? And yeah. I'm just can like, we? yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Britt Brit gave no me a little look when I did that. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, no. She could feel the energy was a little off. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, after oh, we were done, man. we walked away and I'm like, we almost didn't have rings. But we got them, so we're good. And yeah, yeah. she had to keep taking photos, so she couldn't be upset. <laughs> yeah. Well, even like I think it was like an hour after, or so when we we're like taking photos somewhere, I thought this was like a good time to like tell her. Even in that moment where we've already accepted that nothing wrong happened and everything's fine, she still wasn't even like that funny about it. She was kind of like, "Sorry, what?" Yeah. <laughs> she was still kind of like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> we were both like, "We picked you specifically." 
Because everybody else is going to be drunk. <laughs> everybody else is going to make mistakes. But it worked out. Uh, That's a beautiful story. Stressful. Mm-hmm. Wow. Double that was, uh, I was really there. That, I felt that was a good story. Double That's O wild. Dustin. That's wild. That good. <laughs> nice. Good time. But I'm very grateful that uh, it was no harm, no foul. Mm-hmm. I didn't ruin Kyle's wedding. And, Did not uh, ruin Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, nice. we were able to do the, uh, I guess, what's it called? The reception after? I don't know. Every time Brittany says, hey, what did we listen to at this point? I don't know what that point was. I don't know reception, <laughs> commencement, ceremonies. I don't know any of it. It's all the same yeah. to me. Yeah. You just get married. Just one big party. Get around. Yeah. Nice. But it was good. It all went well. And Kyle got married. And that's mm-hmm. the end of that. That's beautiful. Right? Wow. Well, uh, I think that's, uh, that's about all we got for today. I think it was a good one. Nice little hot one. Didn't really slow down ever. Don't think we talked about <laughs> anything we thought we were. No. <laughs> well, I mean, we got to like the two bigger stories. No, it was, uh, it's good. It was a we, we came in combo. hot. It was nice. Yeah. That was all right. I had to spit one of these bad yeah, boys out. But clean that shit off. My I know. Floor. Yeah, my OCD has been staring at that. One yeah, the <laughs> fact that ball. you had just left it there. How can so you do the whole that? time? So my mic is just perfectly lined up. Him. You didn't know it was there. Fuck off, cop. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it on my floor still too. So that's great. Appreciate that. Um. Anyways. We thank you for sticking around this long. If you watch the whole thing, mm-hmm. um, we're going to keep putting up the clips and uh, posting to all the social media platforms. Yeah. And um, if, if anybody has like an idea of like when people normally look at Instagram and TikToks, because <laughs> like I'll put them up, they'll get a shitload of views and, and it'll be a random time, the exact same time next time. Five. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Kyle needs some help. So if you got some advice, feel free to let us know. Mm-hmm. We're always looking to improve and uh, make this uh, product a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all we got for today. So thank you. Yeah. It's been a good one, boys. Yeah, it's a good one, boys. Until next time. Peace. Oh, yeah.